Israel says it recognizes Morocco's sovereignty over Western Sahara. It's an area also claimed by the Polisario Front. What does this mean for the long-running conflict in this region? And what will Israel get in return? This is Inside Story. Hello, welcome to the programme. I'm Sahil Rahman. Disputes over Western Sahara have raged for decades. Morocco claims it as its own, while armed groups backed by Algeria want independence. But right now, momentum may be on Morocco's side. Israel has joined the US in recognising its claim and is hoping more countries will follow. We'll put this to our panel in just a few moments. But first, this report from Fintan Monaghan. Within this desert of more than a quarter of a million square kilometres lie valuable mineral resources. But the Western Sahara is contested. Morocco says it's part of its territory. That's disputed by the Polisario Front, an armed group fighting for independence. Morocco's claim isn't widely recognised, but that may be changing. Morocco restored relations with Israel in 2020, and that's been cemented by Tel Aviv recognising its rule over Western Sahara. The move was overseen by the Trump administration that also granted U.S. recognition of Morocco's claim at the same time. It was the first country to do so, reversing decades of policy. Morocco hailed it as a major breakthrough. This confirms historic and important decisions, the case of the Moroccan desert and the U.S. acknowledgement that it is part of Moroccan lands and the developments in the Middle East in re-establishing relations between Morocco and Israel. On the other side is the Polisario Front, backed by neighbouring Algeria. They fought a war with Morocco for more than a decade that ended in a ceasefire in 1991. UN troops were deployed to keep the peace until a referendum on the region's future, but it was never held. Morocco believes momentum is on its side. 28 states have set up consulates in Western Saharan cities, actions Morocco sees as support for its position. Spain and other European countries have also backed a plan for Western Sahara to have autonomy under Moroccan rule. Another shift some believe is in Morocco's favour. The status of Western Sahara is far from decided. But with Israel and the US backing its position, Morocco is hoping more countries will do the same. Vincent Monaghan for Inside Story. So let's bring in our guest for this edition of Inside Story. In Rabat is Abdel Malek Alawi, the president of the Moroccan Institute of Strategic Intelligence, it's a think tank. In London is Yossi Meckelberg, associate fellow with the Middle East and North Africa programme at Chatham House. And in Brussels is Mahanjou Maleha, advocacy head of the Collective of Sahrawi Human Rights Defenders, a non-profit organisation. Gentlemen, welcome to Inside Story. Can I just begin with you, Mr Alawi, in Morocco? Why has Israel, do you think, decided on this position to recognise Western Sahara right now? Hello, Suhail. Thanks for uh, having me. I think this is a logical continuum of the resuming of diplomatic relationship between Morocco and Israel in 2020. And we have to say that Morocco has a specificity. It's the only Arab country that has around 600,000 Moroccan Jews living in Israel, many of which a lot of them were waiting for this decision because some of them come from the Sahara, very naturally. So this is a logical decision that is dictated by geopolitics and the new dynamic in the bilateral relations. OK, let me uh, cross over to Yossi Meckelberg in London. I mean, uh, Israel and, and certainly Tel Aviv has had nearly, what, three years uh, since it signed formally um, the, within the Abraham Accords recognition of each other. I mean, what was Israel waiting for? Well, I think Israel wanted to see what the rest of the international community is doing. Obviously, back then, the United States recognised the, the West Sahara as, as, as part of, of, of Morocco. But in many cases, Israel is, is, is trying to delay things that might be a bit less comfortable. Bear in mind, only 28 countries uh, so far recognized uh, the Western Sahara as, as, as belong to, to Morocco. But I think, you know, Israel is a state of flux. 
it's easier to actually to get something out of, of the government that is, is, is desperate for some achievements. It didn't come, it didn't come sorry, completely free for Morocco because it's the, 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 what comes with it is an upgrade of the diplomatic relations, upgrading the diplomatic mission there into a, a, an embassy. So there is some give uh, and, and take there, and it's in a point that Israel needs also some, some diplomatic achievements. Indeed, and we'll be looking at the military uh, connection then a little bit later in the conversation. Let's cross over to uh, Maju Maleha. You've heard what uh, both uh, Abdul Malik and Yossi had to say. I mean, the, the move itself by Israel could be viewed as antagonistic uh, by both the Polisario Front and Algeria. I mean, uh, it's the main supporter for autonomy uh, of the region. What sort of reaction do you think can we expect from the Polisario Front uh, and in the hours ahead from Algeria? Well, I think the Polisario reaction was already uh, made public through a statement. Uh, I think we need to, to highlight here that the recognition uh, from, from, from Israel, which is also an occupying state for the occupied uh, Palestine, um, a recognition from, from an occupier to, to Morocco for its illegal occupation in Western Sahara uh, there is absolutely nothing to celebrate in here. Um, uh, 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 to be so desperate to, to, to legitimate an illegal presence that has been proven throughout the process of decolonization and the process within the United Nations and all the resolutions that has been confirming over and over again that, that the right to Sahara to self-determination of the Sahrawi people is an obligation, an obligatory uh, way or path toward the decolonization of, of the question of Western Sahara, as as well as as confirmed by by consequence consecutive uh, uh, rulings from the European Court of Justice, that that has been actually confirmed that Morocco has no sovereignty over Western Sahara, nor it can obtain the administering power status as it remains with Spain and remains and transferable under, under international law. Uh, uh, this recognition came exactly in the same day that, that the European fleet uh, 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 left West, the Western Sahara waters after uh, the, the Fisheries Partnership Agreement protocol came to an end with no, with no insight for its, its, uh, its extension. So it is, it is a cover-up for that, and, and, okay. and we don't see it really as as a victory for Morocco, especially when, when it is against the will of the majority of the Moroccan people who, okay. who could remain, remain supportive to the Madhub, Palestinian I, we, cause. I want to just jump in there, because we, we've obviously got your sort of sense. We want to try and, you know, get, get debate across uh, our, the three of you, the three of our guests here on Inside Story. Abdul Malik, can I come back to you in mm -hmm. Rabat? I mean, obviously, you know, the various points of view about how this situation is unfolding and how uh, various groups and governments are going to react to this. Uh, for decades, though, well, you know, in... we, we've seen... We, we've seen sorry, the question actually is coming. For decades, though, we've tended to see confrontation in the area, not outright violence uh, or uh, overt fighting, as we've perhaps seen in, in Sudan in recent weeks and months, but described as uh, a low-level intensity. I mean, do you think that this low-level confrontation will be heightened, tensions will be uh, heightened, we, we are in danger of a conflict in any shape or form? Well, the view from Rabat is that it is very much improbable that we will have an escalation. But if we build on that, we have to understand history and we have to understand facts. As much as I'm interested in conspiracy theories that are dropped by uh, uh, Algerian diplomacy, we have to, stay, to state very simple facts. There is a big paradox in the world today. The whole international community is screaming and shouting about separatism in Ukraine. But yet, some part of this international community uh, is not that enthusiastic about recognizing the legitimate rights of Morocco over the sovereignty of Sahara. In Morocco, we are peace brokers. We are agents of union. And if we are to draw completely the parallel, it's very symptomatic that uh, the Polisario Frente, which is a guerrilla movement that accounts for 6 or 7 percent of the total Sahrawi po uh, population, that is weaponized by the Algerian regime, which is uh, having a rivalry with Morocco, is very much so like the Wagner Group in Russia. It's uh, a militia, a paramilitary system that is used by an antagonistic country 
to use their internal problems and to defuse their internal problems. So I don't think there will be if, escalation. They, they, sure, if, you were that's fine. There, there might not be escalation, but certainly on the political front, if we just go back to August 2022, Rabat recalled back the Tunisian ambassador from Algiers when there was a, an investment conference being hosted by Algiers, and they invited uh, the head of the Polisario Front, uh, Brahim <coughs> Ghali. I mean, you say you're peace brokers, but you, 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 again, you are also very sensitive to the regional movements of the Polisario Front and, and who they meet and who they don't. Absolutely, but let's take a look at a very iconic image, and I'm, I'm happy that I'm speaking about this on Al Jazeera. The only Arab country that was able to have crowds cheer for its national team in Palestine and in Israel is Morocco. And we have a specificity, is that we recognize our Jewish heritage and we recognize our Berber heritage by the Constitution, which is very different from what Algeria is doing, which is backing a military movement and not, not recognizing the rights of the Berber population in Algeria. So we are peace brokers, but we do not accept that countries that are our allies, that are in the same regional space, are meddling with, uh, within our internal uh, aspects and internal affairs. And there is common ground now and growing support for the Moroccan proposition of uh, large autonomy, which is a form of self-determination. It has been backed by the United States, as you said, but it is backed now by Spain, it is backed by... Germany, this is the sense okay. of history. We cannot have a double standard, a standard for Ukraine, and not have the same standard for Moroccans. OK, let's go to Yossi Meckelberg and Linda, because obviously, you know, Morocco is hedging its bets by getting closer to Israel. So, and this um, uh, confirmation by Tel Aviv over at Western Sahara certainly uh, helps that argument on the international front. Um, does it help with the traction further afield? I mean, is it a fair assessment that by, you might see, aligning your, your posts next to, to Tel Aviv, you know, it will get more um, support on the international front? Is that how you would perhaps analyse the politique right now? Let me just say something before that, because it's interesting. We see something which there is undermines the ability to end conflicts in the international arena. We see this kind of conflicts happen in different places, you know, whether in the Sahel, you know, the case of, of Western Sahara, in Ukraine, and other places, that, that conflicts have, you know, fester for a long time until they come head on and they continue and they create tension, not only, for instance, what happened between Polisario and Morocco, but also with, Al with Algeria. So the entire region is dragged into this because there are no mechanisms in order to resolve it, which brings me to your question, yes, you, when you are in this situation, everyone is looking for allies. So whether it's the Polisario with, with, with Algeria, Morocco with the, the United States and, 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 and Israel. And, and again, we need to look at the history of the relations between Israel and Morocco. Even without diplomatic relations, Morocco, for instance, helped to, to initiate the peace negotiation with Egypt back in the 1970s, uh, visits, unofficial one, even secret, uh, negotiation, diplomatic engagement between Morocco and Israel are going on for a very long time. What happened with the Abraham Accord, specifically with Morocco, is basically formalizing relations that exist even then. There were reports about uh, help by Israel with, uh, with the military efforts in, in, in the Western Sahara. So in this sense, it's similar to also what happened with the UE in the sense that there is what happened with the Abraham Accord is formalizing, making it, you know, legitimizing and normalizing yeah. relations that to a certain extent before and then build on this relationship. OK, well, then let me ask um, Majoub in Brussels. I mean, if, you know, Morocco is getting closer, obviously, to Israel and vice versa, they're not the only Islamic Muslim uh, country, dare I say, Arabic country as well. We've got Egypt, uh, as mentioned, Jordan, UAE, Bahrain, even Turkey. They all have diplomatic relations uh, with Tel Aviv at, at different levels. Uh, do you think your, 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 the Polisario Front uh, and its supporters and the countries that do acknowledge it at the moment, only Algeria, are, are, are on the side of a losing battle here, trying to get sort of the, the poli positive politique sorted? Well, well, I don't, I don't see it that way. Uh, to, to be honest, when we look at other countries who have normalised ties with Israel, that has been 
in 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 most cases based on on their proper analysis and what's what's best for their agendas and and their people. When it comes to to Morocco, it was a pure a pure uh, bargaining operation, a trade in the black market, trade in Western Sahara for Palestine. And here, uh, uh, referring to Algeria and the Polisario, uh, they are in a very, very comfortable position because they have been consistent in their position toward all, all causes, from Western Sahara to Palestine, from East Timor, Belize, and so on. But, but, but Morocco here is, 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 is facing serious questions that, that require uh, clarifications toward their own people and to the international community. What happens to, to Al-Quds Committee that, that Morocco uh, presides? Um, what, what, what are the prices given or against what? Uh, 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 this recognition came when it comes to, to the Palestinians and their right. Would they? Would they uh, uh, recognize uh, Jerusalem or Quds as eternal uh, capital of Israel? Uh, we have seen the military attaché coming to, to Rabat and, 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 and the accelerated integration between both regimes basically give us the, the intention that Morocco is handing over the, its, its own national security to Israel. Okay. But, but, but would, that, would that contribute? I don't think any. Uh, that this has any impact, and the impact lays basically in what the Polisario Front is awaiting and the Sahrawi people is awaiting uh, within this year from the European Court of Justice. And this will be a ruling historical that will will confirm again, once again, the legality of Western Sahara and the illegality of Moroccan presence in, in the occupied territories of Western Sahara. But to, to provoke the neighbors by involving other part, parties would not be the right path to take, especially when, when we compare or when we look at the, the geopolitics right now. Comparing this with Ukraine, I think, I think the international community, especially the West, would, would face a serious problem with its controvers controversiality and inconsistency in, 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 in foreign policies. When we okay. are against I'm gonna, occupation I'm just in Ukraine, jump in there. you cannot um, be I'm, supportive Majum, I'm just gonna jump in there. I, Western Sahara. I'm just going to jump in there, because I don't want to get us too bogged down in the Ukraine issue, which I also appreciate uh, there are similarities, or could be, uh, in the future. We we'll really want to keep it to, to what's going on now. Uh, Abdul Malik uh, Alawi, I mean, does become closer uh, to Israel distance Morocco uh, from sort of the larger Islamic world. There's a great deal of tension between um, Israel and other Muslim countries that are very supportive of the Palestinian cause and the right to statehood. We can't ignore it. It's happening on a daily basis. Janine was a classic example of what we've seen over the last few weeks, which is, has shocked uh, millions who've seen those pictures. What is Morocco's strategy in dealing with Tel Aviv when it comes to the Palestinians? You can't ignore the issue because you're closely involved in the Arab League and also uh, in the Organization of Islamic States. I don't think that Morocco is ignoring at all the issue and the position of Morocco under the leadership of His Majesty the King has been crystal clear from day one. In Morocco, we believe in a two-state solution, and His Majesty the King is the chairman of the Quds Committee. So every single Moroccan and taxpayer Moroccan is giving part of his revenue to the Al-Quds Committee in order to rebuild the ancient quarters of Jerusalem. So this is something that is at the heart of the conversation in Morocco. But we do believe that you cannot make peace and you cannot have a conversation with someone you don't speak to. It needs two to tango. It's a very personal thing for all Moroccans. We're very much attached to the Palestinian cause. And the Moroccan government was very clear in condemning some of the attacks by uh, the Israelis on the Palestinians. But we are, as I said also, in a tradition of peace brokerage by Morocco. It was the leadership of His Majesty the King who uh, enabled the reopening of a very important gate between Jordan and, uh, and Israel. So we do believe that diplomacy works. And, you know, as it is for Palestinians, it's very important for Moroccans. Sahara is very important for Moroccans. If I take a personal example, I come from a Sahrawi family, and I'm as Moroccan as Minty. So we have to stop opposing the fact that we can have diplomatic relationship with Israel and ask them the tough questions mm -hmm. and ask them the tough questions about Palestine. And at the same time, we can support the Palestinian people. This is the Moroccan position. 
a position okay. of balance and a position of moderation. We certainly got that cleared up. Yossi Mechelberg, can I come to you uh, in London? Because the one thing that is uh, very evident in Israeli politics right now is that uh, democracy can easily head back to the polls if the public are not happy. And we've seen election after election, certainly for over the last few years. Do you find it interesting that Morocco and its leadership has decided to cultivate a relationship with the military more so than you might say, the politicians. It's been an easier conversation to have. Hence, we've seen these arms sales, which I'll talk about in a little while, and this military attaché, who happens to be of Moroccan descent uh, and a Jew from Haifa. Yeah. Uh, how do you assess that connection uh, and, and the strategy that Rabat has with Tel Aviv when it comes to, you might say, arms sales? I think some people still don't recognise the depth of the constitutional crisis in Israel, that it's the deepest since the establishment of the country in 1948. And, and there, is, there is an effort there which I think is artificial in, in differentiating, compartmentalizing between, yes, the diplomatic relation, the Palestinian issue, uh, military relations with, with Israel. Yes, Israel is a major a supplier of weapons and which you know many countries would like to to purchase especially when they are in a state of 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 conflict but at the same time not recognizing or turning a blind eye but they, by that by purchasing these weapons they they supporting a country that is occupying uh, millions of people and depriving them of basic human rights and i think it goes back to what the previous uh, uh, speaker said Yes, Morocco says certain things about the Palestinian issue, but all the countries that signed the agreement uh, with Israel, on the one hand, yes, we would like to see more cooperation and diplomatic relation normalization, but without ignoring the Palestinian issue, A, because it's morally wrong, and B, because it's going actually to harm their, their own interests. And there is a, the, the issue of that when it comes to, to the supply of, of arms and the arms trade, that people are ready to... to, ready to turn a blind eye, what does it mean, what are the implications for others, as long as, A, one makes a lot of money out of it and the other is getting the kind of weapons that they would like to purchase. Yeah, let's just give our viewers a little bit of context about this, because a major element of the warming ties between Morocco and Israel has been the arms sales. The deals are worth hundreds of millions of dollars and give Morocco access to high-tech weaponry. This includes the Makava tank, an advanced piece of hardware that Israel has never sold to another country before. Also, Israel has sold a range of military drones that can be used for surveillance and precision attacks. Now, these could prove useful in fighting armed groups in Western Sahara, like the Palisario Front. Uh, Yossi, let me just come back to you very quickly, because obviously, you know, we talked about this military defence attaché, the upgrading of relations between Tel Aviv and Rabat. Uh, Colonel Sharon Itash, he's uh, uh, from the Home Front Command. He's of Moroccan uh, origin uh, and is attached to the Home Front Command in Haifa District. It's a masterstroke, isn't it, to actually have an Israeli of Moroccan descent attached to uh, Morocco. It brings those ties together, doesn't it, very, very easily? Yeah, and he's not the only one to serve in, in, in the diplomatic service and in Morocco with, with fruits in, in Morocco. And this is, obviously, this is, this is, this is a beautiful thing to see, the re-establishment of relations between hundreds of thousands of Israel that were born in Morocco or descendants of people from, from Morocco and, 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 and Morocco. This is something that I think many people would like to see. And uh, so, yeah, it's, it sends all the right okay. uh, signals to both countries. But again, as long as they're looking also at other issues without ignoring that there is, there is the issue of occupation, there is the issue of, 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 of the Palestinian issue. Uh, Majum Malehe, let's uh, bring you back in from Brussels. I mean, how worried do you think, uh, on the much wider level, uh, and looking at this story, you know, regionally, uh, is Algeria going to be, in your opinion, with Israeli munitions on the border? Yeah, I think the Algerians have been very clear on that point, uh, uh, considering it as, as a direct and clear provocation uh, from, from the Moroccan side. For, for, for would, that, would, that, would that basically contribute to the peace and stability in the region? Um, I don't think so. Uh, from the other side, uh, talking about, about the, current, the current Israeli regime, basically, it's a far 
right extreme racist regime in 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 power in Israel who is who is recognizing the the so-called sovereignty of Western Sahara and trying to extend uh, or to extend its tie with with the Morocco regime. Uh, this is this is absolutely not not something to be proud of. Uh, let's let's be clear on that. On the other hand, for for the Sahrawis or for the Sahrawi people, it is it is to be to be mentioned. Uh, that that their faith is in in, in, in the legality and noble uh, and, and it's noble in its noble cause and of course believing in in the international law and and the, the fundamental rights that have been set okay. by by the United Nations Charter. This cannot okay. be this cannot be deviated no matter no matter no matter who recognize uh, uh, an occupation or try to re, uh, to give it a sort of legitimacy. But let us not ignore. Uh, the impact it's uh, on on Morocco itself, on the Moroccan people, and and, and its stability inside Morocco itself well, would would be that, I mean, me, uh, that uh, a threat to to the to the stability in Morocco itself, rather than 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 being a threat to the neighbouring countries. Well, let me go back to Rabat. We're coming to the end of the program, uh, Abdul Malik Alawi. Very quickly, are we actually heading towards a sort of a North African Cold War, where we've sort of got Morocco, U.S., Israel on one side, on the other side, we've got Algeria cozying up, obviously, to, to Russia and Iran. These are concerns at the moment that strategists are looking at as to seeing whether th this region could be another hotspot. Well, I think we're witnessing a global reconfiguration of alliances, and Morocco is. Uh with a new doctrine of multipolarity. We are, we're building alliances with a lot of new allies. Uh, and when it comes to defense, we're not simply buying uh, arms. We're building a national industry of defense with a lot of partners, not only mm -hmm. Israel, but other countries as well. And the second thing is that I don't know why nobody raises the question about Algeria. Algeria is buying weapons from Russia and has been for decades, and nobody's talking about it, and it's the most armed country in the zone. And when it comes to Morocco, I mean, we just stick to fact. It's the stablest country when it comes to institutions and when it comes to macroeconomics and the most vivid and important industrial hub in the region. So I would yeah. say maybe there is a Cold War, but there is one country on the rise, which is Morocco, and there is a country that is depending on extractive industries and oil, which is Algeria. We'll see uh, which country is making the winning bet for its people and for the stability of its country. There, sadly, we will have to leave it. I'm sure we'll continue to follow this story very closely on Inside Story uh, for the moment. Thank you to all of our guests, Abdul Malek Alawi, Yossi Mekelberg and Mahju Maleha. And thank you, of course, for watching too. You can see the programme again anytime by visiting our website at aljazeera.com. And for further discussion, go to our Facebook page. That's facebook.com forward slash AJ Inside Story. You can also join the conversation on Twitter. Our handle there is at AJ Inside Story. From me, Sahil Rahman, and all of the Inside Story team, thanks for your time and your company.